Inaugural speeches are a very peculiar genre. They are, by definition, pronouncements by individuals who don't yet know what they are talking about. <laughs> or we might more charitably dub them expressions of hope unchastened by the roll or rod of experience. So says Drew Faust, president of Harvard. These are sobering words not to be taken lightly. Might I respond to her words by first waving at you <laughs> in some vaguely presidential way to acknowledge your warm applause and then promptly sitting down? <laughs> but that's not what this ritual presumes, as the gifted organizers of these ceremonies have often reminded me. Nor would that move likely sit well with our University Board of Trustees. Yet, let's be clear about one point. Today, we celebrate the University of Scranton with this festal gathering, marking a dramatic intersection of the past with the future, of our traditions and accomplishments with our hopes and aspirations. This is why we are here. So I stand before you this day honored by the trust of the university community, grateful to the Board of Trustees for its confidence, and inspired by my mission as the University of Scranton's 25th president. Your presence humbles me, and I am touched by the greetings from faculty, staff, students, alumni, our sister Jesuit institutions, and the community of higher education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I note the very welcome presence of our bishop, the Most Reverend Joseph Bambara, of the provincial of the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus, the very Reverend James Shea, of Rabbi Joe Mendelson, and of representatives of other faith communities. I am also grateful to our honorable mayor and state senator who have come to welcome their new neighbor. I thank God for the presence here of my family, especially my mom, Pat. She has insisted for the last six months, as only a mother could, that my new job required a new black suit, <laughs> and possibly more than one. Guess what I was scrambling to do last week. Absent in mind, though very present in spirit, is my dad, also Pat, who died three years ago. I am sure that he is celebrating in paradise with his brothers, John and Tom, as proud Irishmen would do. Finally, permit me a shout out to numerous members of the Daly, Quinn, and O'Grady tribes, family friends from Long Island, personal friends and colleagues from every stage of my life, and my brother Jesuits, some of whom have traveled great distances. They would never forgive me. As I was preparing this speech, a number of inaugural veterans proffered much free advice. Be profound, humorous, and insightful. Literate, inclusive, and inspirational. Respectful, aspirational, and above all, brief. <laughs> to all, thanks for your very encouraging words. What I will do is offer my vision for the University of Scranton, a vision by definition that is provisional and open to revision. I take as my starting point the question, what does it mean to say that Scranton is a 21st century Jesuit university in North America? Allow me to name one presupposition before I begin. These are challenging times in higher education. Issues such as cost, quality, access, and accountability provide easy targets for both academic heavyweights and media talking heads. The academy may be adrift, as some notable commentators lament. 
But these are also times of extraordinary opportunity to reimagine the mission of the university, or in the words of Adolfo Nicolás, Superior General of the Society of Jesus, to refound the universities of the society. For Nicolás's predecessor, Peter Hans Kovenbach, Jesuit higher education rests on two fundamental principles. The first is that all inquiry can serve to deepen faith and that faith by nature demands understanding. Faith and understanding are intrinsically connected. Religion and secular intellectual culture need to be open to one another's insights. Religion and culture raise important questions and need each other to understand and to answer them fully. The second principle, equally important, is that love of God that does not include love of neighbor is a pious fraud. Thus, we must ask ourselves whether our students deepen their sense of wonder and curiosity, cultivate their ideals, widen their understanding of human life and their sympathy for others. Does the education we offer enable them to learn how best to ordain their lives to what is best for themselves and good for other men and women. In a Jesuit institution of higher education, the knowledge gained through inquiry brings with it the responsibility of acting justly for the common good. But the ethical ideal proposed by our schools should be of a higher level than that of liberal education. We and our students should continue to be asking ourselves if the choices we are making are leading us to the ideal of service as proposed by the gospel. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. As we have heard, the University of Scranton is animated by the vision of St. Ignatius of Loyola and his first companions. The Society of Jesus is over 460 years old and continues to educate young men and women in the spirit of Ignatius. One of the key phrases capturing the charism of Ignatian spirituality is to love and serve in all things. In Ignatius' Spanish it reads, en todo amar y servir. How did Ignatius understand service and how might we follow his lead? I turn to Jesuit David Fleming for his Ignatian ways of serving. He writes, first, by looking at God who is the first to serve, we begin to learn about service. Second, from God, we learn that love is the foundation and love is the stimulus for service. Love is expressed in deeds, in acts of service, more than in words, and yet our service should speak out and communicate the love that is at its source. Third, service cannot be restricted to certain actions or deeds, to certain results or accomplishments. From Jesus and the Gospels, we learn that to follow is to serve, to be available is to serve, to believe and to trust is to serve, to accompany is to serve, to forgive and to be compassionate is to serve and to celebrate the Eucharist is to serve. We also learn to serve is always to share what we have been given. That is why serving always follows upon loving, because lovers share their gifts. Here lies the key to Jesuit education in the 21st century. What universities claim to be teaching their students specifically to think critically, reason analytically, solve problems, and communicate clearly is necessary but not sufficient for Jesuit universities. For a Jesuit university should ask more of its students by challenging them to make Ignatius's charge, his notion of service, their own. This is the value added of Jesuit education and is why we kicked off the inauguration last Friday with a celebration of service. Over 750 students, staff, and faculty volunteering in 20 social service agencies around town. 
This shows that we are already serious about service at Scranton. And as economists remind us, value-added features give competitive ed edges to institutions which otherwise, more, which otherwise might be more expensive products. But one might ask how a Jesuit university is to achieve this ultimate learning outcome. What I would like to do here is to propose one way of proceeding by outlining an education, a distinctively Jesuit education, that is engaged, integrated, and global. Jesuit education has engaged mind, heart, and hands since the 16th century, when St. Ignatius founder, founded the Society of Jesus. In the year 2000, Father Kolvenbach, then Superior General of the Jesuit Order, called for a new Jesuit educational standard. Tomorrow's whole person, he said, cannot be whole without an educated awareness of, science, of society and culture with which to contribute socially, generously, in the real world. For that reason, he explained, students must let the gritty reality of this world into their lives so they can learn to feel it, think about it critically, respond to its suffering, and engage it constructively. They should learn, he said, to perceive, think, judge, choose, and act for the rights of others, especially the disadvantaged and the oppressed. This is the contemporary standard for engaged learning in a Jesuit university. To apply these Jesuit marching orders, students should be encouraged to enter worlds beyond Scranton, to gain an education that no classroom alone can offer, to learn with and from people in marginalized communities, and so to become global citizens for the new century. This educational strategy calls for a personal transformation that would lead to transforming society. The ideal of personal transformation requires a rigorous education to prepare students to become ethical and compassionate leaders who will infuse society with faith and justice informed by knowledge. For personal transformation to be effective, academic, moral, and spiritual experience must be integrated with and enhanced by learning outside the classroom. But it must be experiential learning in which immersion and reflection on experience are intertwined and focused on the needs and concerns that many in our world face. But there is a catch here, a shift in educational philosophy. It is not just serving others and learning about people, but learning with and from people who are often excluded from participation in economic, social, and political life. And further, it integrates inquiry, creative imagination, and reflection on experience that inspires fashioning a more just and humane society. Through these experiences, faculty, students, community partners, and indigenous peoples become dynamic partners. In sum, the 21st century Jesuit University should be committed to a pedagogy of active, collaborative, transforming, transformative learning about social justice as an integral part of a liberal education. To be sure, the University of Scranton is well positioned to build bridges between the classroom and civic community, between northeastern Pennsylvania and the world beyond. For the Scranton community already embraces the reality of global interconnectedness and views the city, the region, and the world as venues for our learning and research. One example, one among many, will suffice. All academic programs in our Pernuska College of Professional Studies require every student to do community-based learning. And our current strategic plan endorses expanding service opportunities for faculty, staff, and students. But much more needs to be done. To deliver a transformative education in the Jesuit tradition, as I mentioned earlier, requires the integration of academic, moral, and spiritual learning, the union of mind, heart, and soul. 
Education of the whole person in the Ignatian style helps students discover their vocation in life, above all, their vocation to love and serve. This project of self-discovery and discernment, including discerning our deepest vocation, is a great challenge to all on our campus. For students, it causes great anxiety. For faculty and staff assisting students, self-doubt and caution often dictate. I speak here from personal experience. Aside from providing first-class training in Ignatian discernment, a Jesuit university must be a place where the Catholic tradition is studied and understood. The vast riches of the Catholic intellectual tradition is our privileged asset and our competitive edge. Keeping the faith is a no-brainer as we attempt to deliver a transformative education at the University of Scranton. This will require new and stronger collaboration between active, academic and student affairs, a tactic that our strategic plan already endorses. We may need to rethink our residential learning programs, our two optional programs for our first year students, core personalis and wellness programs, sufficient institutional commitments in helping our students integrate life and learning, or our additional models and new imaginative experiments still necessary. In promoting the holistic development of our students, we need to recognize what Father Nicholas labels the globalization of superficiality, superficiality of thought, visions, dreams, relationships, convictions. For him, new information and communication technologies are negatively shaping the interior lives of everyone, but especially our students. They have taken over every aspect of our daily lives, from commerce to leisure and even culture. Just think, emails, instant messaging, chat rooms and social networking websites such as Facebook and Twitter, Skype, iPhones, cellular phones, and similar applications. The challenge for uh, Jesuit higher education here is to promote in creative new ways the depth of thought and imagination that are distinguishing marks of the Ignatian tradition. To accomplish this may require us to imagine some of our organizational structures. But one thing is certain, not to realize the goal of educating the whole person in the Ignatian style would disappoint many, including myself. An inaugural address is not the time or place to unpack the concept of globalization, much less that very fashionable expression, globalizing world. For we all know that globalization is a widely used term that can be defined in a number of different ways, and there is little common ground between its opponents and opponents. Rather, my claim that Jesuit education should be a global education is a simple one. Call our students the global generation, and so we need to encourage them to think locally, regionally, nationally, internationally, and globally in whatever they study. Providing greater opportunity for international study, increasing diversity on campus, and expanding multicultural experiences for our community, three strategies already present in our current plan would help our students think globally. I end this speech by returning to my original question. What does it mean to say that Scranton is a 21st century Jesuit university in North America? My answer, the University of Scranton, a Jesuit university, can and should excel in providing its students an education that is engaged, integrated, and global. Faculty and staff, students and alumni, trustees and parents, friends and neighbors of Scranton, we can do something special here. Of that, I am very certain. Our university's tagline is pride, passion, promise. Experience our Jesuit tradition. The key word is our. We take our Jesuit mission and identity very seriously here in the city of Scranton. 
So let us go forth together from this place, as the university's strategic plan demands, to set the world on fire. And I might add, feeling the pride, experiencing the passion, and realizing the promise. God bless you all. God bless the University of Scranton, and thank you.